Hello everyone and welcome to one of the first games that finished from round 10 of this year's Tata Steel Masters. It is Yanni Pomishi versus Ding Liren and uh, if you guys uh, haven't been following what's been happening, in last year in, in April they played their World Chess Championship match and it was a really thrilling event uh, trading blow for blow at the end. Uh, after 14 rounds of classical chess uh, the result was 7-7 to and then they went into rapid tie breaks. Uh, first three games ended in a draw and then uh, Ding Liren uh, defeated Nepo in the fourth game uh, becoming the world classical champion so uh, no doubt a heartbreaking event for nepo but what are you gonna do whenever there's a uh, one against one one has to be victorious one has to be defeated but okay now you uh, you know a year after that you get a chance uh, you, you know you get another crack at uh, being in classical uh, here at tata steel so let's check it out it's a really beautiful game nepo with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4 we have pawn to e5 by ding knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 going for the ruler Lopez, uh, uh, we have pawn to a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and now knight to f6. We have castles, and now bishop to e7. Just, uh, you know, standard uh, closed Rui Lopez, d3, and now pawn to b5. Going after the bishop, bishop to b3, and now pawn to d6. Pawn to c3, again, nothing new here. We have castles, and pawn to a4 now. Going after that b5 pawn. Uh, rook to e1 is a bit uh, more common than a4, but a4 still very much played. We have bishop to d7 and bishop back to a2. And this unprovoked bishop to a2 is uh, fairly rare. h6 and now pawn to h3. And here just rook to e8. And there is a game, uh, it was played in 2011 between Peter Swidler and Michael Adams. Uh, it, in that game rook to e1 was played. But here we have bishop to e3 by Nepo. And it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, Dean goes rook to b8, again, another standard move. Uh, knight b to d2, and now bishop to f8. Now, uh, you could also consider capturing on an a4 and then capturing on b2. It's not that it's bad, it's even the top move recommended by the engine, but it just looks weird, you know, you're, you're trading down uh, without achieving all that much. You do have an active rook, but, uh, I mean, it's nothing spectacular. Uh, so instead we have bishop to f8, Ding just keeps the tension, and now pawn to g4, Nepo goes for the attack, g4, g5 is coming. So okay, Ding goes bishop to e6, he wants to counter Nepo's strong bishop on a2, uh, bishop captures on e6, we have rook captures, and now a captures on b5, we have a captures, uh, and now pawn to g5, going after the knight on f6, uh, h captures on g5, and now knight captures on g5, you could go for bishop captures, uh, but bishop to e7, and you don't really, you you're not really pinning anything. So here knight captures on g5, uh, rook back to e8, and now king to h2. Now Nepo hoping to get his rook into the game uh, via the g file, uh, but Ding strikes in the center with pawn to d5. As Nepo's king is wide open here, it's of course very principled to open up the center as well. Uh, rook to g1, now pawn to d4. We have captures, captures, bishop to f4, and now bishop to d6. Trying to trade off the dark square bishops. Uh, bishop to g3, and Ding just trades. Bishop captures on g3, where Nepo, Nepo could capture with the pawn, with the rook, or with the king, and capturing with the pawn would be a little bit weird, and... Uh, also maybe with a king, but it's actually perfectly fine. Uh, he captures with the rook. Ding immediately pins it, queen to d6, and now king back to g1. The reason why you don't play something like queen f3 and then try to double up is that it doesn't achieve all that much. For example, g6, you're going to play rook to g1, uh, knight e5 attacks the queen and forces the queen back and after queen e2 or queen to d1 knight to h5 and uh, you know black is much much better you don't have queen captures on h5 g captures because there's no good uh, uh, jump with the knight if you could somehow pick up the the black queen while you're at it maybe it's possible but you don't so after queen to d6 just king to g1 nicely unpinning and now rook to a8 offering a rook trade uh, nipple goes for a rook trade captures captures and now queen to b e3, putting pressure on the f7 pawn, so queen to d7, ding just defends it, and now knight d to f3. Uh, capturing the b pawn, uh, while it is possible, it's um, really an invitation to an early draw. Uh, you, you have to see that the knight covers the a5 square, rook to a5 is possible, the knight here can get attacked, and if you capture on b5, then just knight to h5 will attack the rook, and now you don't have a better option 
then to repeat uh, rook to g4, knight f6, rook back to g3, knight back to h5, because if the rook moves, just rook a5 wins the knight on g5. So capturing the b-pawn doesn't really do anything. So knight d2, f3 by Nepo, uh, rook to b8, and now queen back to c2, putting pressure on the knight, so the queen has to be careful. Rook to b6, adding another defender to the knight, and now pawn to e5. And this pawn to e5 is uh, uh, now very useful. You will not have to worry about any knight h5, knight to f6 action. So knight to h5 does attack the rook, but rook g4, and now there is no knight to f6. And here, uh, it's very hard to find the move for Ding. And Ding was already down to, I believe, 20 minutes on the clock. So it's not uh, anything serious. Uh, uh, 20 minutes is, you know, enough for Ding to make nine, nine moves in any position. But here, he just doesn't find it. Here, you have to play the centralizing queen d5. And it looks like a great move to play, even if you don't know what uh, it does it just i mean look at this position with the queen on d7 and now look at the position with the queen on d5 it's a much better position and uh if you if you try to throw in some moves let's say queen to c1 for the queen to enter the king side uh pawn to f6 already you get a trade here with an attack on the rook and if rook h4 yes looks very nice you will just bring the rook back rook b8 and it's a game nothing spectacular happening here if queen to f4 uh, yeah it's a fine move but nothing really uh, you can easily defend the pawn and, uh, you know, the game continues. But in the game, Ding played rook to b8. And here he just started loitering with the rook uh, uh, without, uh, you know, giving giving it any purpose. And Nepo played queen to c5. It's a very, very strong um, uh, idea. But I'm going to show you one that wins uh, just, you know, uh, straight up. But it's uh, very hard to see. Uh, and that is knight to e4. Uh, really uh, a beautiful move and now it's uh, very very hard to play but uh, the, the problem is uh, it's also very hard to see why it's winning for example knight to d8 all of a sudden queen to d2 is coming and now uh, how do you how do you respond to this with black the queen is coming to g5 there's just no good option here the rook is stuck here uh, otherwise queen g5 will also come with an attack on this knight and on this knight uh, if you play queen to f5 to stop that, then knight to h4 just gets rid of the queen. And if queen captures an e5, now rook g5 will win material here. So it's uh, uh, something an engine would play, uh, but, you know, just wanted to share it with you. Uh, but in the game, queen to c5 was played. Also very hard for Ding to find the move here. And the only move that the Ding should play is knight back to b6. This rook to b8 move was just a bad idea. But still, even, if the, even after this rook to b6 move, e6 is coming. e6 is coming in all the lines. And uh, there's just no good way to stop it uh, due to the knight hanging here on h5. And after captures, captures, it's just a much better position for Nepo. Although, okay, maybe if uh, he doesn't play it perfectly, maybe there's still a way for Ding to defend. However, Ding played rook to e, sorry, not rook to e8. Ding played rook to d8. Rook to e8 would, be, would have been better than rook to d8. Uh, and now uh, it's uh, completely winning for Nepo. But uh, again, you can play a lot of things here. Uh, in the game, knight to e4 was played, but I'm just going to show you what e6 does as i know you guys are looking at it if f captures uh, then knight to e4 and now look at this the knight here is hanging how do you defend it the uh, only way to do it is uh, queen to d5 the knight has no squares uh, if you move it to, to f4 to sort of give up the knight, the knight f6 check picks up the queen as the g-pawn is pinned. And if you play queen to d5, looks great. You, you know, get rid of everything, but there's rook g5 attacking the queen. And now if you trade queens, you don't capture with the knight, you capture with the rook and both of the knights are hanging and that's it. Black resigns. So that's uh, one way to do it with pawn to e6. But Nepo went for knight to e4 first. And now look at this. Queen to e6, Ding blocks the pawn, so he doesn't allow pawn to e6 uh, but now the position is completely winning so feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning idea for nepo while i give you a couple of seconds So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on helping Nepo exact his revenge uh, for losing the World Chess Championship match. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to H4. That is the way to do it, as we know the knight has no squares. And, uh, yeah, it's a very sad position for Ding. G6, well, it can be played. Rook captures on H5 just um, uh, completely elim eliminates uh, all, all defensive ideas that Ding might have. Uh, but similar uh, thing... Uh, 
uh, so, sort of was in the game, so we're gonna we're gonna skip that line. In the game, rook to d5 was played, attacking the queen here. But now Nepo just played queen to a3, and with the possibility of this queen to a8 check and the king not having access to the h file if the knight moves, uh, there's just no good move here. For example, if you play queen to f5, uh, all of a sudden queen to a8 with check. And now you cannot block with the rook because the knight hangs and you cannot block with the knight because the rook hangs. Very, very tricky stuff here. So instead, after queen to a3, g6 was played now. Uh, but here, Ding, uh, sorry, Nepo just played knight, g, knight f to g5. And he was in this position on move 36 that Ding Liren, world champion Ding Liren, resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So uh, both of them having a tough event, both of them with two losses so far. And this is now Ding's third loss in classical chess in one event uh, a very 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 hard you know for, for him after uh being away from classical chess for so long and um you know especially taking a beating on his rating uh but what are you gonna do but what's fun here is why it um uh, why this move is so strong uh, well, uh, you, there, there are other ways to do it. I'm just going to show you a, a few of them because the, the game is now over. You could capture on h5 right away, like we've discussed it in the previous line. And if g captures, now knight to f6 with a nice fork here. And after king g7, you play knight captures on h5. And look at this. Now the king cannot go to f8. The queen is uh, stopping that. So the king comes to h6, but now you play knight to f4 again with the fork. The queen and rook are attacked. And now you either... Uh, stop check uh, and uh, lose the rook on d5 or you somehow try to defend the rook and then you just get checkmated. Queen f8 checking h7 and now knight to g5 checkmate. Beautiful stuff here. Uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, the, uh, Nepo decided to go knight f to g5 but it was also enough uh, because you have two ways to maybe defend this one is to go back with queen to c8 to stop queen to a8 with check but then again rook captures on h5 and after g captures knight to f6 comes with check and after king g7 you just pick up the rook so if the queen moves from the defense of the rook this is how it ends and there's even a more beautiful way to do things after this knight um, uh, f to g5 if you try queen captures on e5 so you don't stop the check on the back rank then it's queen to a8 with check knight to d8 blocking now it's possible because the queen defends the rook uh, but that's the question is the queen really defending that rook look at it look at it real closely no it's not uh, because rook captures on h5 g captures and now queen captures on d5 that's the good stuff queen captures knight to f6 with check uh, and uh, the, the line ends with um, Nepo being up a full piece. For example, king to g7, knight captures on d5, and Nepo is just up a full knight. So Ding is of course very strong. He saw all of this and he said, "All right, I don't want uh, I don't want any of this. Uh, you know, I'm disgusted by this game." Uh, so it was unmoved 36 that Ding resigned the game. Beautiful stuff by Nepo. And uh, for those of you, uh, I don't know. I think a lot of uh, the other games are still being played, but just in case they're not, uh, let me just quickly check. Uh, I'm sure some of you maybe even don't want to uh, know the results of other games. But yeah, uh, all of the games are still being played. Some of them seem to, uh, you know, uh, be, be going into <laughs> a decisive way. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, you know, still... Uh probably probably will be played a long time uh, but yeah use that hashtag suggestion if you have any of your own favorites and i will be uh, glad to go over them so yeah very nicely done by nepo uh, i would like to thank len herbert yun young anonymous person uh ulimse and christopher and ruth burkett for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.